see people joining. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I was just testing out the stabilizer here, hoping it would hold tight for me. This is Brittany at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. I was just walking from my office. My office is out in the party house. And the closest cats to me is actually Andre and Amanda. I believe they're already separated for feeding. Good morning, everybody. Forgive me while I mess with this gate. There we go. So, let's see. We're gonna try our luck with Miss Amanda this morning. Good morning, Kim and Karen. Hi, Andy. Hi, good morning. Hi, will you talk to us for a few minutes, Panda? I always call her Panda Girl. Hi, you're kind of backlit. Yeah, that's not a very good view, huh? Let me see. I don't want to frustrate her too bad. <laughs> Hi. Morning, Dove. Hi, Anthony. Hey, Sarah E. Hi, lady. You're okay. Oh, it's very sweet. It's very sweet, Amanda. Morning, everybody. This is Amanda Tiger at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Kathy and Barbara. Jenna. Yeah, it's uh, in the upper 40s. Very, very chilly. <laughs> Very good interaction. Of course, I'm a little afraid to turn and walk away from her. <laughs> Let's go find your brother. Let's see Andre over on the other side. Up on the platform now. She was being very sweet. That's um, it's very interesting. <laughs> Morning, Dee Dee. For her to roll over and be submissive like that was pretty, pretty interesting. Hi, Mr. Man. How are you handling all this cold weather? It's not so bad. It's not so bad. This is Andre. Yeah. Sister was being very nice. Thank you, Lynette, for your donation. Oh yeah, Anthony, you guys are half the temperature we are. <laughs> I shouldn't be whining, but I am. I'm sorry. I'm you probably hear my teeth chattering. <laughs> I know. This is Andre Tiger. I don't think I've shown either of these two in a while. I know they typically, you get to see them for evening meds, but I hardly get all the way out here. So I figured since they're the closest cats to my desk that I would start with them today. I'm on foot, so there will be some lag time for you guys to ask questions and me to actually watch the screen. I know, I, if you guys are just joining, thank you, Suzanne, for your donation. Amanda was up on the platform. She actually rolled over and kind of showed me her belly and didn't roar. This is Andre here. Yeah, I think it's about 47 degrees here in Tampa, Florida. Hi. He is ready for breakfast. Can you see Sharon down there yet? Sharon Henry is the senior keeper that's doing meds this morning. Oh, and thank you, Sharon, for your donation. <laughs> Yes, Sue, all of our live feeds uh, post automatically on our Facebook page, so facebook.com slash bigcatrescue, or they also um, post on our show channel, which is facebook.com slash wildcatwalkabout. Good morning, Noir. We're here with Andre Tiger while he waits not so patiently for breakfast and morning meds. 
Yeah, I know you're not one of the, you're definitely not the only person not getting notifications when we go live. Um, and in fact, it actually happened to me last year um, because I used to watch every single live that Carol ever did. And for some reason, it was about a month and a half period of time where I just never got notifications. So there's Amanda again. <laughs> I don't know if I should even try a second time. Um, if you're at, if you're new to us, we are on 67 acres and we have 60 permanent residents. We have three rehab bobcats. Here comes Amanda. We'll, just, we'll see if she'll continue to be chuffy and sweet. You can learn about all of our cats at bigcatrescue.org slash cat bio. So you can see there's a door there to this whole section up front here. Um, that door is closed for her because uh, we dropped two doors for them. Yes, because you're a little crazy. So they get two doors down between them and the feeders until the food is safely in the enclosure. And then they open the doors. Yeah, if you uh, want to start this over from the beginning, all of our live feeds always post automatically on our Facebook page. All right, baby girl, thank you for being sweet. I know, thank you. It's very nice. So we're just getting started if you guys are just joining. We have seen Amanda who is starting to test her patience, so we're gonna go. We did just talk with Andre for a minute. And my goal is to go, we'll go back out the gate I came in. Yeah, I actually even contacted Facebook when I stopped getting the notifications and there was no actual reason why I shouldn't have been getting them. And they were never able to actually fix it, but then one day magically, I just started getting notifications again, so hopefully that happens for you guys. It's almost always a guarantee, though, that I'm going to be live, you know, between 7 and 8 a.m. generally. And then it gets a little random after that. Good morning, Mirza. So let's see what Cameron and Zabu were up to this morning. Keepers putting out the tour water. And there's Sharon. So Sharon's over here to do morning meds with Zabu and Cameron, who both appear to be out in their open air section. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, yeah, as long as you don't mind. Yeah, no. Nope. You missed it. Cameron was protecting the computer. Really? <laughs> so Sharon Henry is a senior keeper that's doing the meds and feeding in this area, and she just said that Cameron. Uh, tried to protect Sharon from Priya. <laughs> They've been having some very interesting spats here lately where all of a sudden Cameron is really intensely interested in Priya who's next door and <laughs> Sharon said he's never done that but he was like growly and trying to get between her and Priya so we've got this new sense of life going. So we'll walk up to their open air section. Lots of vultures out here today. So there's Zabu, our female white tiger. And Cameron. Now if they don't want to participate for Sharon, um, we'll walk away. 
actually think Cameron is also trying to protect Sabu from Priya, with Priya being a female tiger as well. <laughs> but... So there's Cameron. Cameron's our male lion, but he was neutered because we don't believe in breeding for life in cages. So because of that, the mane is testosterone driven and therefore the mane did come out naturally. Boo Boo! So Boo's over there. They were housed together in their early years in hopes of making white ligers, a hybrid. And they never did breed. When they came here, we could tell they were definitely bonded, having grown up together, so we fixed them both. Uh, Donna, generally they don't go after the birds because the birds are really not worth the effort. Um, they're fed pretty well here, so they don't usually feel the need to catch anything extra. And to be totally honest, a lot of times if they do hunt them, it's more for sport. Um, they may catch it and kill it, but they won't eat it. Thank you, Laura, for your donation. They are really fixated on something over there. Both of them. Big yawn. Let's see where they're gonna go and we'll try to follow. Maybe they're actually gonna go find Sharon. <laughs> Yes, it is very cold here. I think it's about 47 degrees here in Tampa, Florida. Cats love it, but we're all, all the keepers are pretty whiny about it. I wonder if there's like a turtle or something over there. Not much gets Cameron's attention usually unless it's a new kind of food. He's been really into lamb and duck lately. Boo's going to play along. Cameron's still trying to decide. Does he go back for Priya or does he come for food? <sighs> oh, I think he might go for food. We are going to keep our distance though. Uh, Lisa, I think people want to hybridize cats because it would be something new and different. It's kind of like a freak show and people always seem to pay money to see stuff like that. But it's really horrible and cruel because it's not something that would ever naturally occur in nature. So they're born with a ton of health issues. Oh, I'm sorry. I think your breakfast is waiting for you on your plate. Sharon has to give him his. She's such a good girl. She tends to keep her distance when Cameron's being fed. You're just fine. She gets treats too, and she'll get a full breakfast. She eats about six to eight pounds a day. <laughs> I don't know if I can show you everybody at once. So that's Sharon Henry down there with Cameron, getting his morning meds and breakfast. And Zabu waiting patiently, because she's such a good girl. thing you guys can do to help cats like this is to never ever pay to play or feed or have your picture taken with cubs. Um, please go to cubabuse.com and learn more about that. <laughs> She's really laying it on thick today. Yes, that is definitely Zabu making her, her mooing, whiny, growly noise. And Cameron down there is doing pretty good. I've seen him take at least three pieces. And the reason we ask you not to pay to play with cubs is because generally those cubs are born and then ripped away from their mothers almost immediately, hand raised by people instead of getting the nutrition from mom like they need. And they're only used for about 12 weeks at a time. And then after that, they are usually sold into private ownership, living in basements and backyards. 
Um, they're neglected, they're not fed correctly, used and abused, and usually also abandoned again because it's very expensive to feed or care for one of these animals. It's your turn, boo! <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, Zabu doesn't hear very well, yeah. so we have to <laughs> have to visually show her it's her turn. There you go. Hi, sweet boy. I'm gonna go back and bother Priya again. All right. Yeah, that's where he Priya's on the other side of that wall, so they can't really see her, but they can. They know she's there. So now Sharon's taking Zabu back over into the roof section where Zabu will eat her full breakfast and block out. As you can see, she's able to walk all the way over. And then her lockouts are right on the other side there. Let's go down and see what Cameron and Priya are up to. We'll walk over and see Priya as well. Where are you going now, sir? He's very interested in something on the other side. I'll have to walk over there and see what it is. It's just so nice to see him up and so active. He's been such a picky eater for such a long time. All right, well, there he goes. Morning, Karen. Thank you. I hope you have a great day, too. Let's go see what Priya's up to. So if you guys are just joining, we've seen um, Andre and Amanda, and then we were with Cameron and Zabu. Let's see where Priya is. She must be getting breakfast soon. She's over in her roof section. All of this is Priya's. This tunnel system you see here is what we use to get the cats to and from our two and a half acre vacation rotation. Good morning, Sam. There's Miss Priya. Hi. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. oh, my goodness sakes. Wild girl. What a wild girl. So a lot of the tigers are very talkative, but they all sound very different. Priya is a mooer, <laughs> much like Zabu, but a little less whiny. <laughs> and she's actually taken to, to roaring lately. Um, it's this really interesting just out of nowhere, she kind of makes like an Amanda roar, but it's less scary coming from Priya for some reason. <laughs> it's still scary and it startles you, but it's like she moves so hard that at the end she like lets out a little roar. She's very excited. Breakfast is coming. Breakfast is coming. Such a wild girl. Yeah. I know. There's so much to say. You can see why her personality just kind of drives Cameron nuts. She's noisy and she's playful and she's always on the move. And I think Cameron's kind of the old man, like, shaking his cane at her, like, calm down. You're something else. Priya is another great example on why we ask you guys to never ever pay to play with cubs. Um, she was used as a breeder, so she had countless litters that were taken from her that she never got to raise. In the wild, tigers would have cubs that they would raise for two to three years before the cubs would go off and kind of get their own life. I saw that, Deb. Yep, her birthday, I believe, is on the 20th of this month, so it'll be coming up. I'm just gonna wait right here because she's just gonna keep coming back. <laughs> I know. And so 
so anyway, but um, she was bred over and over again at the facility that she came from. And when she arrived here, we could tell there was something wrong with her. Her belly was really swollen. She was very angry um, and growly and just super, super aggressive. And so almost immediately within the first day or so of her being here, she went into emergency surgery and there was about a 20 pound infection in her uterus from having been bred and bred and bred. Um, also, people could pay some money to have pictures taken with babies. Um, she's got babies in other sanctuaries. But when you breed a cat in a cage, they live their whole life in a cage. That's why we don't believe in breeding them. Yeah, you tell them, Priya. Yeah, we always say they hit the lottery coming here, but it's, it's a far cry from them having actually been born free. <laughs> yeah, Hoover is something. He, uh, it's interesting now that he's actually on a 24-7 camera because a lot of that behavior we've been seeing ever since he got here. Um, <laughs> but now it's always on camera, so he's, <laughs> he's showing his personality to the whole world finally, which is really fun. Uh, I know everybody was asking Priya's age. I know what her birth date is, but I couldn't remember the year. So there you go, there's Priya's sign. Alright, sweet lady, I'm here in some feeding carts. So here's Miss Kali. Kali, are you coming? Listen to that feeding cart. There's Victoria. <laughs> she is so ready. So ready. Oh man. Actually, I haven't seen her this excited for food in a while. I know, here. I'm like, I haven't seen her this excited for food in a long time. Are you being crazy? <laughs> Nobody was even fasted or nothing. <laughs> this is Kali Tiger. That noise she's making is a chuff. <laughs> and right behind her is Keisha Tiger. This is like the best day ever. <laughs> That's senior keeper Victoria. Oh, even Keisha's chuffing. Everybody's so hungry. I know, it's this cold weather. Oh, Keisha. So Keisha's uh, in the background there and Kali's in the foreground about to get food. Keisha has already had her breakfast. Um, Sharon, who you saw out with Cameron and Zebu, is the one that would feed Keisha in the morning and give her her meds. You guys are just joining. We've uh, we started out with Amanda and Andre, worked our way forward. Cam and Boo and Priya. Now we're here with Kali and Keisha. And something everybody asks as soon as they see Keisha is why doesn't she have a tail? Um, <laughs> it is. If we had a number one question, that would definitely be one of them. Um, so Keisha was housed next door to lions at a previous rundown facility and we believe those lions took her tail, her ear, and she even has some striped pattern that don't match up on her uh, back leg. And you can see this is a perfect example of how we feed them. So Victoria has the door down, she got all the food in for her, it's like it's a red beef day. She can lift the door and then Kali can come in for breakfast. We now have the majority of all of our ropes are off the cage and they're attached to um, poles like that. It's an extra safety measure where our hands aren't always near the enclosure. Thanks Deb for posting that. It's about 10 to 12 pounds of food a day. Thank you, Darlene. Hope you have a great holiday as well. Oh, I'm sorry I missed the donation. Thank you so much. Sometimes I'm squat, like 
just showing you what you're looking at, but I'm usually looking somewhere else. <laughs> right now I was looking at Keisha. You can see Keisha was just staring at Kali from behind her ball there. <laughs> These two girls have had a really great relationship, which has been really, really nice. I think it's helped Keisha a lot. She loves to watch what Kali's doing. Kali's actually on the feeding tour, so I've discovered that I'm actually able to watch her eat and her not scarf it to the point where she chokes or pukes it up because that's the other reason why I don't usually follow feeding because the cats get really excited and then things like that happen and I like them to just enjoy breakfast. So this is Kali Tiger and you can see she's just in her feeding lockout. If you watched earlier you saw her run from the very far back end over there over here. This is just their happy place. We get them used to this area where they know this is where the food comes. They get fresh water. Yeah, I think Kali is our biggest um, female. And Seth is obviously our largest male. Uh, Jody chuffing is the noise that you hear the tigers make. Um, Kali it has a really powerful chuff. Actually, Keisha's got a really good chuff, too. But it's kind of like a tiger hello. Seems I didn't want to crowd Victoria by going back there at the same time she did, so what I'll do is go behind the barricade here, and then we'll walk all the way down to Gabby. Let's see what Gabby's up to. tail hanging out. Got your tail hanging out there. Don't want her to feel like I'm intruding. She gets a little protective. I do have to show you this. Look how great Keisha's camouflage is. <laughs> That's Keisha laying there, spying through the grasses. I can vouch for just how amazing their camouflage is. I had the extreme pleasure of going to India this past March, and it was like a needle in a haystack to see tigers, but we were lucky enough to see quite a few of them on our trip. And the thing I learned is looking for them in the wild um, wild tigers have far less white on them than captive bred tigers. That's because a lot of the white trait comes from, uh, you know, inbreeding and mixing their genes a little closely than they should be. But anyway, the best way to spot a tiger in the wild is actually to look for white because white is definitely not natural to the landscape. So you tend to see their like their chin or their cheek or their belly before you see anything else. This is Kali having breakfast. She's usually a queen plate club. She got um, beef, or we call it red. She got a ground beef diet as well as two huge chunks of red beef. Should we go see what Gabby's up to? She will lick that plate clean. Walk down to Miss Gabby. If you guys are still watching Hoover, what's he up to? Maybe I can walk up there if he's still up walking around. Hi, 
sweet girl. Hi. What a good chuff. Good morning, sweet pea. Yeah, it's so nice. This is Gabrielle. So you saw just how big Kali Tiger is. Gabby is definitely one of our smallest females. Of course, I think even she weighs more than Keisha. Oh, she's gonna go in her den. See if she pops back out. There she is. <laughs> Hi, lady. We gotta get some steps in. And they just had breakfast. Gabby's got this beautiful view of the lake. Of her pool. Hi, sweetness. Oh, where are you going? Spending a lot of time up on her platform again. I haven't seen her do that for a while. What a beautiful girl. Ooh. Gotta get our steps in. These cats would roam hundreds of square miles a day in the wild, but because they are in captivity, they have to get a little creative. Yeah, Kara, a lot of times, you know, when you're starved your whole life or you have really just bad, you know, nutrition, um, you know, you can have all the greatest food in the world, but if your body just doesn't support it or doesn't want it, it's a huge issue we have with, you know, most cats we rescue have come from pretty poor conditions. So even if, if they want to eat that much food, they can't or they don't. Hi! <laughs> In and out of the den. <laughs> Looks like she's got a little morning routine she's doing. You guys can learn all about her at bigcatrescue.org slash Gabrielle. Who do you see over there? You looking at the howls? Kristen and Lovey are running around across the street here. <laughs> Come make me chase you. This is a safety entrance where it's double wire. What do you see over there? Yeah, um, when Keisha, Zeus, and their mother Kimba came in, Kimba didn't even make it six months. That's how far gone she was. So we have felt really, really blessed that both Zeus and Keisha have made it as long as they have. Yeah, no problem, Jody. Thanks for asking questions. We always encourage questions from newcomers. Um, we're one of the world's largest accredited sanctuaries. Um, we don't do any buying, selling, trading, breeding, or touching. <laughs> we're a true sanctuary. These cats come here and get to live the rest of their lives in peace. They'd never allow you to touch them in the wild, so we just don't believe it's right to put them in a cage and force your wishes upon them. We are on 67 acres in Tampa, Florida and have about 60 cats at the moment. Tigers love water, so our tigers all have at least one, if not two, pools. And the pools are fed from the um, the lake that I just showed you. Hi. So Zeus and Keisha's stories, definitely go check those out on their bio pages. But yeah, they were all super inbred. I believe the facility was probably trying to make white tigers, which if you're new to us, you may not realize that white tigers are a man-made species. It's created through inbreeding. So you just keep breeding parents and siblings back to each other until finally you get some white tigers. Yep, thank you Robin. It's a, it's a messy story out there with the captive breeding. And you guys can always re-watch these. Um, so we've thrown a lot of information and facts out there today. You can go to our Facebook page and these um, live feeds always post automatically on those pages. Yeah, 
uh, Andrea, a lot of um, our, our food is top quality um, that we can get for them, but we do a lot of supplements and a lot of medications for like old age ailments, um, pain medications, things like that. The majority of our cats are pretty old. Um, we have three cats that are 23, which are our oldest, several more cats that are between 15 and 20. And if you times their age, um, by six that's what it would be like for humans so a lot of these cats are like being 90 or 100 years old yeah the only way we take cats in is if um, the person surrendering the cats if it's not like the state authorities or whatever if it's private ownership we require them to sign documentation that they will never own another exotic animal um, and that's because we don't want to be a dumping ground. We don't want to let this keep happening. We don't want somebody to give up on an older animal just so they can run right back out and get another kitten or cub. So that can make it a little messy because some people that is what they're trying to do and we just don't want to support that. I know, you're very talkative this morning. getting all the steps in. She had a clean plate, which is wonderful. Well, let's, uh, I'm gonna cross over this little river here, so I'm gonna miss some questions for a minute. Maybe go see what Seth is up to. Possibly Hoover, if he's still out. These are our solar panels here. It's what helps us feed the water from the lakes into all of the tiger pools. Again, I apologize, I'm on foot, so it'll be a minute, but I can answer questions if you have those. I see that our awesome moderators are also helping me. I appreciate you guys so much. I was trying to show you basically all the tigers today. <laughs> This is Max and Mary Ann's enclosure that we're passing by, the cute little waterfall. I always say that they have the honeymoon suite. Yep, Shannon, I was from Ohio too. Um, the Zanesville massacre is actually what woke me up that we had such a big problem with these exotic animals living in private ownership that when they slaughtered all those animals, I just, I couldn't take it. <laughs> so I started doing a lot of research and my husband and I wound up uh, finding Big Cat Rescue, loving their mission. And we packed up and moved to Florida and became volunteers. We're both senior keepers out here now. Hi, Hovey. It's over. Sweet boy. Oh. He's gonna just take us on a walk, I'm sure. Just gonna go for a walk with Hoover. Now Hoover is our international rescue. He was rescued from a circus life in Peru. We've actually now at this point seen a lot of undercover footage of how abusive they were to Hoover. Hoover. Hi, sweet boy. Oh. Just gonna get a drive by. All right. I'm gonna walk with you again. And we'll go see what your crazy neighbor's up to. You know, if you think about it, these are cats. I mean, your cats at home are not usually gonna be super, uh, it's not like a dog, you know, where you typically can train dogs without having to beat them senseless. And that's not how it is with tigers, that you want to do tricks and jump through hoops and perform. Hi. I see your neighbor in the background, actually. Looks like Seth is actually already settled by the lake. So Hoover's probably gonna be our last stop. Hi, 
Spencer. Now you can watch uh, Seth and Hoover 24-7 live if you go to bigcatcams.com. You can actually watch them all the time. They've got a huge fan club. You are so talkative. Oh. Oh. <laughs> all right, let's actually go. Seth is just always so pretty on that. Thank you to everybody who's been sharing this feed and everybody who donated. I really appreciate everybody who's been helping me answer questions. If I missed anything, I try to reach out to you afterward when I get back to my desk. Hi, Sethy. There's beautiful Seth. I would zoom in, but my camera does not cooperate with that few times I've tried to do that it either turns the camera around and freezes or it has shut down my live feed before. <laughs> hi Seth. Will you come over and say hi if I go back there? I don't know how muddy it is back there though. It's the only issue. It We had torrential rain the other day. And in some areas, it's still past your ankle. Yeah, I think Seth is in a good spot for the day. So if you guys go to his live camera, you should be able to see him. Are you being sneaky? Hi, do you wanna come over here? I was gonna see if I changed location if you would. No. Emma, no, I don't think we've ever dropped anything in an enclosure like that. Um, if you could see the setup I have, my phone is actually connected to um, a stabilizer, which is on like a long handle. Not quite like a selfie stick, but similar. And because of that, I can keep a hold of all of it. <laughs> I was sort of hoping um, when Andy Tiger lived next door, he always had this really silly thing where, I will be, <laughs> he's staring at me, um, where if a group would walk out onto this bridge to look at Seth, Andy would immediately get in the lake and start swimming and pushing his red ball around and showing off, kind of like, hey, look at me, look at me, come back over here. And <laughs> I've been really hoping that Hoover would start doing that because he does get kind of acts a little like interested like hey what why are you over there now oh I'm here Hoover Hoover has been here for a couple years now and only in the last few months has he actually started being vocal which I really really love he's that's part of part of what is you know so amazing about watching him finally settle in All right, everybody. Well, as I said, you guys can watch these guys 24-7 at BigCatCams.com, and you can choose Tiger Lake. Looks like Seth is all kinds of exhausted from his breakfast. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I... I'm sure as a camera operator, it'd be really hard to choose between Seth and Hoover. <laughs> All right, everybody, well, Hoover's over there hiding in a corner, if you can kind of see him. So thank you guys so much, everybody who was new today and all my regulars. I love hanging out with you guys in the morning. Thanks again for all the donations and I will uh, see you all again soon. Have a great day, everybody. coming back over no oh. just love this cat all right everybody have a great day mm -hmm.